All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. Next type of um, mitigating mitigation measures is impact reduction. So, example of this is use of silting basins or traps, planting of temporary cover crops, scheduling, uh, scheduling of activities during dry months to reduce erosion and sedimentation. For example, um, you are doing your mining activity. And in one way or another, um, your mining, your mine tailings, um, because, you know, when you, do, when, when you do mining activity, water is always involved because you have to extract those minerals you have to um, get at least maybe not the pure ore, maybe at least, you know, the clay and the silts um, will be washed away with the water. So therefore, you always need water with your mining activity. So if, if, if the sediments would always, you know, it always goes with the water because you use water to, to wash off the silts and the clays uh, from your minerals. Be, so before you letting the water goes to the rivers and the lakes and the ocean itself what you can do is for you is um you can have a sediment uh, a silting pan or a silting basin um for the sediments to um for the sediments instead of, of instead for the sediments to go with the water it can settle down on the bottom of the basin or on the bottom of the pond before you will release your water at the same time, there are, um, for example, um, with the planting of temporary cover crops, um, there are areas, even in Leyte, there are areas in Leyte, especially in southern Leyte, there are areas in southern Leyte that they are doing forest plantation. Um, in which, um, of course, do, if, if you have forest plantation in one way or another, after 10, 15, 20 years, you have to harvest those trees because it's a forest plantation. Um, there might be cases that if there are storms, typhoons, or heavy rains, if if a cert if the certain area is not covered by trees anymore because you already harvested it, um, some people or I would say the forest planters or the for the the the, the owner of the forest plantation um, would actually um, plant. Um, are you familiar with Madre de Cacao? So the good thing, I don't know if, if that's the correct local name, but the good thing with Madre de Cacao is you can actually plant it using its branch. And then, you know, after a few days or weeks, it will actually, its leaves will actually just grow easily without you um, tilling or without you taking care of it. So they actually wanted to cover, um, they actually wanted to cover the land um, for the meantime, because if they replant the trees again, so of course, if they are going to replant the trees again, of course, it would take time for the tree to grow. So what they do is they plant, you know, temporary cover crops, and and usually they use madre de cacao for that. And then, of course, um, um, if you are doing activities that um, would enhance erosion and sedimentation, then therefore it would be. Uh, good for you to schedule activities during dry season. So that's an example of impact reduction. If we can reduce the impact, um, you know, on that specific area or that specific time or that specific activity, then, you know, we should do that. Um, another example is use of construction site camps and trucks for journey to work to reduce impacts on local housing market and on the roads of project with major construction stage employment. Um, that is why... Um, I don't know if you have seen this, but I have seen this many times. Like if there is a con road construction, um, along the way there are construction site camps in which the workers of that 
construction site are actually living there temporarily. So, you know, for them to, um, of course, it takes time to, you know, to travel from your house to that construction site. So, for them to reduce, um, you know, certain impacts to, um, to the roads or projects per se, then, you know, that's the best way to reduce um, that specific impact. Um, the next example is repair, rehabilitation, or restoration type of mitigation measures. So an example of that would be um, agricultural land, um, land use for storage of materials during construction may be fully rehabilitated. Um, land use for gravel extraction may be restored to agricultural use. So um, actually, the easiest way to, to, um, to explain this is if we can repair or we can rehabilitate or restore a certain area that was affected by our project or activity, then we should do that. So, for example, if we extracted um, gravel in a certain area um, and, and if there is no gravel anymore to that specific area, then, you know, it would be best to plant or to restore it as an agricultural use. Um, another example is a river or stream diverted by a road project can be uncon can unconverted uncul and reestablish reestablish with the similar flow pattern and then of course um rerouting of the road if we can do rerouting then you know that would be good at least um when we reroute uh, maybe we can um we, when we do rerouting uh, maybe we can we don't have to, um, for example, affect a certain unique ecosystem or um, maybe we don't have to excavate um, a huge portion of a certain mountain or maybe we don't have to put tunnels if we will do rerouting of our roads. Another type of um, mitigating, uh, mitigation measures is compensation type of mitigation for adverse um, impacts that cannot be reduced because there are impacts that we cannot really reduce. So for example, for loss of public recreational space or wildlife habitat, the provision of the land with recreation facilities or recreation of nature reserve elsewhere. For example, if we have a certain project, um, um, I think uh, this was a huge issue before in Mindoro, um, we know, right, that we have a Philippine Tamarao in Mindoro. At the same time, in Mindoro, they actually have a wildlife preserve for um, Philippine Tamaraos. Yeah, there was a certain project that um, it was actually just a proposal. I don't know if it was pushed through, but um, there was a certain um, there was a certain project or a certain proposal that the habitat that the world of habitat of the, um, of the Philippine Tamara will be affected. Um, uh, but according to the proposal, um, according to the proposal, um, they, would like, they would like to sponsor um, a certain natural reserve for that Philippine Tamara, um, in which, you know, that's, that's another type of mitigating measures where um, since the nature reserve or the wildlife reserve will be affected by the project, then, you know, they can sponsor another nature reserve or a wildlife reserve to another area. But um, since the wildlife is being affected. But I am not sure, though, if um, it was pushed through or not. Another example um, of that is the opening of Disney in Palawan. Um, I don't know if... I don't know also if it was pushed through because that, that, that proposal, actually, it's already funded. Um, um, it was already funded by, by Disneyland um, because they wanted to have a, an ocean something, Disneyland ocean land something in Palawan. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it was pushed through. I think it, it, the proposal or the bidding or, or whatever you call it um, happened before the pandemic. Um, but anyhow, that's the proposal on their mitigating measure, mitigation measures. They also included there that they will be, they will sponsor um, a nature reserve or actually a sanctuary for for ocean, um, for ocean marine fisheries. Um, 
that was actually one of one of the I should say one of the major project um, why why their project was um, approved um, because of that certain um, um, certain proposal or certain uh, sponsoring of a certain um, sanctuary. Another example is uh, loss of privacy. So for loss of privacy, quietness and safety in houses adjacent to, uh, for example, a new road, the provision of sound insulation or the purchase by the developer of badly affected properties. So there are cases that the um, there are cases that the developer itself would actually offer, um, you know, an installation to their houses. There are also cases that the developer would even um, would even offer ways. Um, for example, if there are a lot of dust because of the construction of the road or because of uh, because of the development of the road itself, some developers would would even offer houses to put. Um, you know, net or, or to put something on their windows for the dust not to, you know, go directly to their houses. So, you know, that's one way to compensate uh, for a certain type of mitigation that cannot be reduced. Um, the last type of mitigation measures is alternatives. Mm -hmm.